welcome to the sixth video on block diagrams. This video is going to look at loops with several inputs. So first let's remind ourselves of what we know already. We've done shortcut methods to finding the closed loop transfer functions between an input to the loop and an internal signal in the loop. The basic rule we derived was the transfer function was the forward path between the loop input divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function. Now this video is going to look at what happens when a, a feedback loop has several inputs coming into the loop and hence it will have multiple summing junctions. Typically this will happen where you maybe have a target as one input and then disturbances and measurement noise as other inputs. Now the key principle we want students to learn in the long term is that they can use superposition. Now the concept of superposition was covered in the videos on linearity, so please check there if you've forgotten. The main point is the total output of a system due to separate inputs occurring simultaneously can actually be computed by calculating the responses to each input separately. So as if only one input was happening, you calculate the, the output, and then if another input's happening, you calculate the corresponding output, and then you can just add the two together. We're going to illustrate this slowly for one example, and then we'll take it for granted for the future examples. So let's look at this simple loop here. You can see it's got two loop inputs. I'll circle them for you. We've got a signal R coming into a summing junction there, and a signal D coming into a summing junction there. And what we might want to know is what are the internal signals E, U and Y, and how do these depend on the loop inputs R and D? Now the first thing I've done is the longhand method. You'll see on the left here I've written down the equations you get at each summing junction. So E equals R minus Y for one summing junction and F equals D plus U for the other summing junction. I'll put in the signal F here. Okay. And then you've got two blocks, M and G. So you've also got the equation U equals ME for the left hand block and Y equals GF for the right hand block. Now what we do next, using the same method as in earlier videos, is just solve these simultaneous equations. So here we go. First step, E equals R minus GF. I've just replaced Y by GF in the top equation. And then I happen to know what F is. F is D plus U. So as I go down, you'll see I've just replaced F by D plus U. And then finally, I know that U is ME. So as I go down, you'll see I've just replaced U by ME. So there's my final expression. E equals R minus GD minus GME. Now if I move both E's to the same side and rearrange, I end up with this relationship here. E equals 1 over 1 plus GM times R minus G over 1 plus GM times D. So you can see the impact on E of each loop input is clearly separated. 1 over 1 plus GM tells you the impact of the signal R, and minus G over 1 plus GM tells you the impact of signal D. So what next? We might want to find out what U and Y are. So let's do this next. Now in order to get U, I'm just going to use this expression we already had up here, U equals ME. So I can write down almost by inspection, U equals M over 1 plus GM into R minus GM over 1 plus GM into D. Now what about Y? If I want to get Y, I'm going to use this signal here, Y equals GF. So in order to get that, I'm going to write Y equals, now I should notice that F is D plus U. So I'll do the U term first and worry about the D second. So I'm going to get GM over 1 plus gm into r minus, now here's another one, g squared m over 1 plus gm into d and then I've got an additional term plus gd. Now you look at that and you think golly that looks a mess. However, what I can do is I can multiply this 1 plus gd by 1 plus gm divided by 1 plus gm. 
in order to make the denominator the same throughout. Now, if we do that, and then I look at simplifying this expression here, I'm sorry I've run out of space a bit, you will find it reduces to plus g over 1 plus gm into d. So it actually reduces to a very simple form, plus g over 1 plus gm into d. So there we are, we've done things longhand. So now, what next? Let's look if we can use superposition and use shortcuts and find out what results we get if we do it that way. So first of all, I'm just considering the loop input signal R. So there it is, R. And this is what was covered in the previous video. So we take forward path over one plus return path. So you can see E, the forward path is one. The loop transfer function is GM. So you get one over one plus GM times R. For U, you get M over one plus GM times R because the forward path is M. And for Y, you get GM over one plus GM times R because the forward path is GM. So that's the same as before. However, what about this second loop input signal, D? Let's have a look. Now, the interesting thing is that if I go from D through to signal E, and I'm going to draw a line here so you can see, you'll notice I go through the transfer function block G, but also this minus sign. And therefore, what I get is this. E equals minus G over 1 plus GM times D. So the loop, sorry, the forward path is minus G. How about U? Well, if I'm interested in U, you'll see I go through the G, I go through the minus sign, and I go through the M. So you end up with minus GM over 1 plus GM times D. So in both these cases, the forward path includes a negative sign. So it appears here in the transfer functions. However, if you look at Y, you'll see the forward path from D to Y is just G. So there you are, Y equals G over 1 plus GM times D. So hopefully you're clear there. I've used the shortcut methods exactly as in the previous video and just written down what I get for each loop input and the impact of each loop input on each internal signal and written them down separately. So next, all I have to do is add the two results together. So if the um, target signal R and the disturbance D happen simultaneously, then my total E is going to be a combination of these two. And by superposition, I just add them. And the same can be said for U and Y. So here's the results. E equals 1 over 1 plus GM times R minus G over 1 plus GM times D. U is given by M over 1 plus GM times R minus GM over 1 plus GM times D. And finally, Y equals GM over 1 plus GM times R plus G over 1 plus GM times D. Now let's look at a different example, and we'll do this a bit more quickly. So you'll notice here we've given you three loop inputs. There's a loop input R, a loop input D, and a loop input N. Now, generally speaking, this R would probably be a target, a set point. The D might be some form of disturbance signal, and the N could be measurement noise. So if H was represented a sensor, then typically on a sensor you have some form of noise. So the actual signal that comes out of the sensor that you can measure, W, is the output of the sensor plus noise. So this represents a relatively realistic example. So let's ask ourselves what we would get for Y. So I'll do each signal in turn. So we'll have something into R plus something into D plus something into N. Now, in all these cases, the loop transfer function is the same. So we're going to get 1 plus MGH in the denominator. So I'm just going to write that down so we don't get it lost. So the loop transfer function is fixed, and that always appears in the denominator, so just put it in there rather than getting mixed up. Next, we ask ourselves, what is the forward path? So the forward path from R to Y is GM. So there we go. Just put GM in there. What's the forward path from D to Y? Well, it's just G, so put that in there. 
And what's the forward path from n to y? And I'll draw a line because that might not be so obvious. There's the forward path. You go through this minus sign and through m and g. So you get minus g m. OK. Let's try a different example now. What happens if, for example, I wanted to find w? So I'll do this a bit more quickly. So we'll write w equals. And so again, I've got 1 plus mgh in the denominator times r plus something. I have a 1 plus mgh times d plus something of a 1 plus mgh times n. OK, so what's the, loop, the forward path from r to w? So let's draw it. We go all the way through those blocks and through h, and then we get to w. So the answer will be mgh. So the relationship between r and w is mgh over 1 plus mgh. What about the d? I use a different color for this. To get from D to W, I go through two blocks, which is G and H. So there we go, G, H. What about N to W? Well, to get from N to W, I just go through 1. So there, I put 1. So in summary, where a loop has multiple inputs, two methods are possible for finding the relevant transferences between the loop inputs and the internal signals. The first method is first principles, whereby you write all the equations at each summing junction and around each block, and then solve what you get. Um, this can be tedious, but it is relatively straightforward. <coughs> Alternatively, you can use the shortcut method, um, where the transfer function between two signals is forward path, divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function, and then use superposition to add things together. Generally speaking, the second method is preferred because with the first method, you tend to have to derive everything, whereas with the second method, you can derive a particular transference almost directly without having to concern yourself with what the others might be. Just as a warning, don't please be careful to remember when you're doing the forward path, if the forward path goes through a summing junction, it might be going through a negative sign, and if it does, make sure you include that negative sign.